Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cisco Community Live event. Uh, this is the first event that we have this year, and Happy New Year to all of you. So before we start, I would like to let you know something about the community. So the Cisco Community is an online forum with over half a million members when you can get answers to your technical questions prior to opening cases with the TAC. Also, you can answer questions or contribute, write documents, videos, and blog. Remember that the community can help you build your career by becoming a top contributor and getting technical to the community and sharing your expertise. So, my name is Hilda Artiaga, and I'm a community manager of Cisco Community and the host of today's event. So today we're very happy because uh, it's not only because it's the first event of the year, but because we also have a great woman uh, sharing this event. So we don't have that many girls uh, in, in Cisco, to be honest. So we are very excited and very happy, at least myself. And thank you very much, Marion, for accepting this opportunity and to Sunset Learning, who is helping us to make this happen. So before we start, I would like to share with you uh, some news and events that we currently have at the community. So first of all, we have an Ask Me Anything following the event. So what is this about? Uh, we have a forum session. That is that if you have any questions after the event finishes related to this topic, you just can post them here till Friday, January 17th. That is this Friday. Or also, if you have too many questions during the session or we need time to validate information or we didn't have enough time to answer to it, you will be able to find the answer just in that forum. Um, this is a great opportunity, so keep that in mind. And if you'd like to access to this forum, uh, we will be placing all the information of this event and other things that we are mentioning on the right side, just on the chat panel that you can see there. And we'll also would like to invite you to this Ask Me Anything event. Uh, it's about Cisco Hyperflex, and it will be talking about, uh, well, you can ask, Ask all your questions about the installations, upgrading, and troubleshooting teams, and all best practices related to this data center solution. Uh, this is going to be available to the end of, of January, and so Afro and Asim will be answering all the questions. Uh, for this event, there's something particular I would like to mention. This event is only open to customers and partners, Cisco customers and partners, okay? So uh, join by them and welcome to clarify all just questions there. And also, uh, yeah, this is a new year, we have done great things with our family, so we'd like to invite you to a very special program that we are running in the community. Uh, so here we're trying to help out people who is in need. By doing different activities in the community, you are helping other uh, Doctors Without Borders to bring in help and healthcare for people around the globe who is in need, okay? So you can read out more about this program and we invite you to collaborate. You won't be be giving any pennies, Cisco will be doing that. The only thing you have to do is a couple of actions, like giving a helpful post or change your, your, your details in your profile account. So more details will be available on the link that you can see on the chat panel. Also, we'd like to invite you to become a top contributor, just as Marin is. Uh, remember that everything you do in the community helps many people around the globe, and we also uh, recognize uh, people who is helping out others. So how does it work? And uh, well, just we would like to invite you to give a helpful vote. Someone gives you an answer that is, is, is assisting you with what you're doing, or someone helps you out to solve your issue, you can give an accepted solution. Just It's just a simple click. It doesn't take you too long. And that helps us to recognize people and also identify quality content in the community. So well, um, just to start on this event, I would like to introduce you to Marine, uh, Marine Mahoney uh, has been in the information system industry for more than 25 years, uh, with roles in employee development, technical support, and help desk administration, network administration, management and engineering, and networking, courseware development, and instruction. She's a senior technical instructor at Southwood Learning Institute and teaches a range of technologies, but specializes in unified communications. Before she joined this institute, Marine worked at Cisco as a network consulting engineer. She also worked for several Cisco reseller partners in engineer and technical instructor roles. Marine is an official Cisco certified system instructor, and she holds a bachelor's degree in mathematics and Russian studies, and plans one day to gain a master's degree in mathematics. So Marine holds different certifications in routing, switching, and data center, and a CCIA in collaboration. He's also a U.S. Army veteran and has been recognized as a Cisco designated VIP from the Cisco community in the 2019 for her contributions in the IP telephony category and also 
um, she is going to be recognized again as a Cisco designated VIP on 2020. So, Marine, welcome to this session. I thank you so much for joining today. Awesome. All right, so we are also very happy that uh, we have a very special person joining us today and helping Marin. And the question Mar uh, manager is Big Takawa, and he will be assisting Marin to solve all your questions. Uh, he's a vice president, actually, of the strategy and technology at Sunset Learning Institute. He has uh, more than 30 years of experience in the IT industry. He has been involved in technical training since uh, 1989 development and delivering customer and vendor-based curriculum. He has been working with Cisco Gear since the mid-90s and holds a current Cisco CCI in routing switching and a CCSIE certification. So currently, Vic is, uh, is the vice president, as I was mentioning to you, and he helps to uh, the learning and managing operations of the delivery teams just in the Institute. So welcome, Vic, and thank you so much for joining today. All right. So for all of you who would like to have a deeper look of uh, all the details of mine I shared during, uh, during this presentation, you can check out the presentation on this link. It's available in the community. So remember, if you find it useful, don't forget to give a helpful vote. That will uh, let us know that you really like this event as well. And well, just uh, very quickly, um, for all of you who hasn't been with us in any events in the past, uh, I would like to let you know that you can submit all your questions Till now, starting from this moment, using the Q&A panel. Usually, the Q&A panel is allocated on the right bottom side of your screen, or on the mobile devices. You can actually uh, uh, just touch the three dots, and you will see the Q&A panel just right there. Please, uh, all the questions are related to this topic and to everything that Marion is commenting. Just place it on the Q&A panel. It helps us out to identify them better and to answer them properly. And for all the questions that you have related to logistics, like oh, my audio is not working well, I cannot hear you, my screen just freeze, or I would like to contact uh, any of you, please use the chat so in that way we can help you out to uh, <clears throat> cover all your queries. And well, so the only thing that I have to do is just like, um, as anything next I would like to say, just thank you very much for being with us today, and I hope you learn a lot from today's session. So Marin, I'm giving you now the microphone and the presenter's privileges, so you can just drive us. All right, Phil, Hilda, thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. <laughs> right, yeah, I know. Well, uh, it seems like it most days. <clears throat> okay, so uh, welcome to the Bulk Administration Tool. Uh, when I am, when Cisco asked me to do this presentation, uh, my first thought was I wanted to do it on something that will help folks do their jobs. You know, I'm a pretty practical person myself, and so I wanted uh, those of you that were coming to be able to walk away with, hey, I now can solve this problem in my job. And I, that, that to me is uh, what these presentations ought to be for. I mean, information's awesome, but, um, uh, you know, how to do stuff is great. So here is what we're going to be doing today, practical bat. Uh, what I won't be showing you today is how to build phones or user accounts or whatnot using the BAT Excel template that you can download from um, your call manager interface. There are plenty of blog posts and videos and whatnot on how to do that. What I'd like to do is show you some of the other things that you can do with the bulk administration tool, especially those things that you can use every day. And we are going to start with the bulk edit feature. Let's suppose you've got you know, 137 phones and you need to check one checkbox on the, that set of phones. How do you go about doing that other than one by one? That's what the bulk edit feature is about. And along with that, I'm going to be uh, working with the multi-argument queries. Um, then we're going to go in, and if you have done any investigation of the bulk administration tool menuing, you will have seen the phrases custom file and custom file format. So I'm going to show you what those are about, what those are for. And as we go along, I'm going to be uh, showing you how to do things that are hopefully, again, useful to you. Uh, as an example with the custom file format, that home cluster checkbox. For those of you who have Jabber deployments, that home cluster checkbox is crucial especially in a multi-cluster environment, for the proper operation of your Jabber clients. And so being able to view the information in bulk, being able to edit the information in bulk, and make it consistent with what reality is. Um, so we're going to be using custom file format to do that. 
Then along also with Jabber, making sure that line appearance associations are up to date. I'll show you, it's actually surprisingly easy to do that. Um, and then we're going to also be looking at uh, import and export. You can do wholesale exports and then imports of data out of your call manager database. And I'll show you how to do that, what to look for, and how to read that data. And finally, and this is, I'm going to leave this for the end because as far as I'm concerned, this is the most fun is, you have a single phone with a single user and that phone needs to get replaced with a new model. How do you go about migrating a phone to a new phone model? Um, I talk to lots of students who end up like deleting their phone and then rebuilding it, hope they get everything right. It's like, is there any better way to do that? Why, yes, there is. And that's what I'm going to show you there at the end. So um, here we go. Now I'm going to be going ahead and, oh, yeah, along the way, um, CSV files, comma separated values, is the file format that is used widely in the bulk administration tool to work with dat the data that you're going to be importing and exporting. I'm going to show you how to work with that data in Notepad++. If you don't have that tool, I highly encourage you to get it. In addition to working with um, uh, the, the CSV files in the bulk administration tool, um, another thing that can uh, be useful with Notepad++ is reading trace files out of Call Manager. It's one of the few uh, utilities I know that can properly um, present trace file information in a usable format. And then also using um, Excel and especially with E164 numbers, if you know about Excel, you know that E164 numbers end up in this, this weird format. How do I fix that? And then um, tar files and 7-zip, but I'll, I'll get there when we get to the end. All right, now I am going to um, stop my video here so that you can concentrate on what I'm showing you. Um, this particular um, uh, presentation as we go along now is going to be um, a, pre a, a demo. I'm going to do pretty much all demo here. I don't want to um, bore you with death by PowerPoint. So the first thing I'm going to show you Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about the polling question. Okay, so um, there should be a polling question up in your WebEx uh, interface. And um, have you used the bulk administration tool to, uh, you know, add phones, um, add anything else, use the bulk edit feature? Have you never heard of the bulk administration tool? Not sure what it's about. Um, please answer the, the poll. Um, and Vic, do we have any uh, technical questions so far that can get answered uh, while I'm waiting on the polling? That poll will be open for one minute. Hi, Mara. No questions yet. Okay. I did see one pop across the screen about converting phones from skinny to SIP. There is a, um, a menu item within BAT to do that. And again, and, and I don't mean to be... Um, I don't mean to dismiss your question. There actually is quite a bit of documentation out in um, the, the, the intertubes as they were in the internet on how to use that particular feature in BAT. But if you have a specific question about that, feel free to post it in the Q&A and I'll either get to it as we do the end of this presentation or I'll get to it in the Ask the Expert session. All right, what do we have for results? Pretty even uh, overall, yeah, and, and including a few people who have never used the bulk administration tool, so I am glad to know that this is going to be helpful to y'all. Good. Okay, well, let's get on with the practical implementations here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the bulk edit feature, and also along with this, multi-argument queries. Um, the multi-argument queries themselves are useful in more than just the bulk administration tool. I'm actually going to start in um, uh, the, the, doing a multi-argument in just looking for phones just to sort of show you that, but then we'll go into bulk edit. The bulk edit feature allows you to make a single change on a set of objects all at once. This can be phones, this can be directory numbers, this can be user accounts, this can be uh, extension mobility profiles as well. You can uh, use uh, queries or custom files. We're going to see how to generate and use a custom file in the, the next section here. Um, but it makes it very easy to do bulk edits like this. Um, once you do certain edits, and the example we're going to be using in our uh, environment is we're going to be um, changing folks to a new voicemail profile on the directory number. But if you were editing a phone, 
um, and that phone needed to have either an apply config or a reset, you can build that into your bulk edit job and uh, then the phones will do their resets or apply configs after the job is done, which is handy. It could let you do two things at once. All right, so let's take a look first in Call Manager at a multi-argument query. I'm going to go to device, phone, and there's a little lag time as the screen is refreshing, so momentito here. I have about three or 400 of these VMs running, and I, so things can be a little slow. So here I've got my phones. I've got 48 devices in my lab environment here, but you may have thousands. How do I go about uh, refining? So let's suppose I want to find a phone where the uh, device pool, let's say, uh, begins with uh, HOH for Houston, um, and I can click Find and I get a set of devices. Well, what if I want to further refine that? What if I want to do uh, devices and device pools that begin with H, but only if they're 8865 phones? So I have my plus and minus here. What I can do is click plus, and this gives me a second ability, a second field that I can search on. And here now I can say device type contains 8865, oops, too many digits there, and find. And here we go, now I have refined this search. And uh, if you are ever searching for objects, uh, for phones, searching for directory numbers, searching for users, and you've got you know, 10, 20, 30,000, the ability to use a multi-argument search to refine your search and find just the thing you're looking for can be very handy. Now, how do I use that with the bulk administration tool? What we're going to be doing in our bulk administration tool, bulk edit, is I have a set of, um, I, I've added a new Unity connection integration, and I need to move a set of directory numbers to a new uh, voicemail profile. So how do I find my specific set of uh, directory numbers? So I'm going to go to the bulk administration tool, and I'm going to go to phones. Now under phones, this is where I can do phone updates, right? And you can also update lines here. If you need to do bulk edits to user accounts, here's user accounts. If you need to make bulk edits to uh, extension mobility profiles, there's that. There's no direct way to do bulk edits for single number reach profiles, um, but there are some of the other techniques I'm going to show you today. You can use uh, do bulk edits uh, using those, but not the direct sort of uh, bulk edit feature I'm showing you right now. All right, so we're going to go to Bulk Administration Tool, Phones, Add Update Lines, Update Lines. The first thing we need to do is, using our multi-argument query, refine the set of, in our case, directory numbers that we want to search for. So I'm going to say, find directory numbers where the directory number begins with slash plus one. I want my US users. And I'm going to add a second field. And specifically, I just want the managers. We're just moving the managers over. They're going to be my test bed. So I'm going to say where my route partition begins with, uh, I'm sorry, contains MGR for manager. Find. So here we go. I have my managers in my US offices. Once I have my set of objects that I want to refine, I click Next. And here is how the bulk edit feature works. This very first checkbox over here all the way on the left. What that checkbox does when you check a box there is says, I would like to change that field. So if I check the box for route partition, for instance, I could change the partition on all of those directory numbers. Or I could, um, in my case, change the voicemail profile to the new voicemail profile. A, so, so any other field that is not checked will not be edited. The only things that will get edited are where you have that first checkbox checked. I want to check this field. A couple of notes about this. If I check the box for description and I actually type something here, 
then that's what all of those descriptions will get changed to. You're making a bulk edit to a specific setting. That also means that if I check that box and leave the field blank, that you're wiping out all of the descriptions. So for things like drop-down lists, I'll check the box, make my selection. For things like uh, text fields like description, you want to make sure that you're changing the thing you want to change. The last piece there is if you're checking a checkbox or unchecking a checkbox. Allow control of device from CTI is a good example. By checking the first box, uh, what I'm doing is saying I would like to change that field, and then whether I'm changing it to the setting of unchecked, or if in all cases I'm changing it to the setting of checked. And that's how those two checkboxes work together. So we are only making our one uh, change here, the voicemail profile. I am going to now scroll all the way to the bottom here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I would like to run this job immediately. By default, bulk administration tool jobs are set to run later, and I'd have to go into the job scheduler and activate or schedule the job to run later. I'm going to have it run immediately instead. So I'm checking the box and submit. And I can now go to the job scheduler and see the status of my job. It is completed. And for those of you not familiar with the bulk administration tool, what I can see here are details of my job. Most importantly, I want to know if my job ran clean. Number of records processed was 12. Number of records failed was zero. And that's good. That means this ran successfully. If you do have some number here, if some record or records failed, then you can open this log file and it will give you a quick down and dirty, excuse me, on uh, what the error was. Sometimes those descriptions of errors are helpful and sometimes they're not, but you know, it's there if you need it. Okay, to prove the point, I'm now going to go to one of my directory numbers. I suppose I should have showed you the other setting first. And I'm going to look for one of my managers, like Jeff Black here. And I should be able to see that his voicemail profile is now the new voicemail profile. So that was a successful bad job. So the bulk edit feature itself, very handy. Multi-argument queries can be used with BAT or in other arenas. OK, hope that was useful. The next thing we're going to look at a custom file. So bulk edit's awesome, but what if there's no query combination available, available that will get you the set of things that you want? The example we're going to use is the following. Um, I have a bunch of phones in lobbies. Um, I do not want lobby phones to host extension mobility profiles, so I want to make sure that any phone where the directory number is in the lobby partition, because those are my lobby phones, I want to make sure that those phones do not have that checkbox checked. Well, if I go to my bulk administration tool, because now I'm editing a phone, right? If I do update phones via a query, what I will find is that there is no field here that allows me to select partition. And I was hoping to talk long enough for the screen to refresh. I can look at directory number, but there's no way for me to look at partition. So how do I go about setting up a, a query, a, a set of devices to be changed based on partition? Here is how we're going to do it. We're going to use the generate phone reports. Generate phone reports allows me to get uh, extract a certain set of information from my database. And this is just about uh, phones and lines. There's a separate one if you want to uh, generate data about users. But, you know, heck, maybe a, uh, somebody has asked, hey, I'd like to do a, a, a publish a, a PDF of a corporate directory. So, hey, can you give me everybody's first and last name and department and directory number? Right. Can I do that? Sure. Generate phone reports is an excellent way to do something like that. We are going to utilize generate phone reports to extract the data that we want. Another way to generate the list would also be just doing the raw import export, which I will demonstrate later. 
one of the limitations of any of these guys is that you're limited to a thousand objects. If I need to change more than a thousand objects, whether that's phones or lines or user accounts, you can't use generate phone reports. Um, it's limited. So if I need to make a bigger one, then you have to do the import export way and we'll see how that works. All right, so let's do this. So I'm gonna go into the bulk administration tool. And the first thing I need to do is do that generate phone reports. Bulk administration tool, phones, generate phone reports. And again, just screen refreshing. So I'm going to look for all of my phones because I'm going to want to generate the data on all of these phones. But again, as I mentioned, up to only up to a thousand. So if you need more then uh, you have to use the export method. What pieces of information do I want on those devices? Well, for starters, I definitely want device name. Now I'm going to click in here. I'm going to click the letter D on my keyboard. That brings me down to the D's and there's device name. I also probably want description. There we are. Uh, because that will probably give me, you know, somebody's name. I want to make sure that I have the right field, right? Um, you have to have at least one device level and at least one line level object. For my line, what I would like is directory number. And then I would also like partition. As a side note, um, this is going to generate a CSV file, and these columns will be in this order. If you want to reorder the columns, you can just uh, select and move things around. Okay, next thing I need to do is give my file a name, and I'm going to call this uh, Lobby PT Export. And um, run immediately. Now, while I'm here, by the way, if you ever need to do a report on who is subscribed to which services, that's another way you can do that. It's harder to find in um, bad uh, elsewhere. Okay. And I'm going to go down to the job scheduler here to see the status of my job. And it's still processing. If you have a job that's in process, by the way, you can open it up and you can see how many records have been processed so far. So only 11 so far of my uh, 48. I won't be able to be finished a little sooner than this. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. Oh, I already showed you that, that there's no combination for that. There we go. Oh, I'm still 26 records processed. Okay. I feel like I should be tap dancing at this point. I did actually mean to show you that there was no combination for this at this point, but I missed that. So we just have to be patient. Um, Vic, this is actually a good spot. Any questions that have come up that can be answered while we're waiting for this? Hi, Marna. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, we have a question um, asking, and I quote, why can't I use the update phone feature to change the settings field? Update phone feature to change the settings field. Which settings field? The update phones feature to change the settings field. Uh, he said most of the time I want to mm -hmm. use the, I want to bulk add the settings feature to restrict it. Oh, I think you're talking about the access to the settings button on the phone. Right. Okay. So uh, what he's talking about is this. When you walk up to a phone and you press the settings button, there is a lot of information in there. So again, think about lobby phones. Um, in the settings button, I can see things like the, gee, my DHCP server, which is probably a Windows server, and my default gateway, which is probably a router. That's hacker juice, right? We, we don't want hackers or bad guys to be able to see that information. So how can I go about restricting those settings? Now, in a lobby phone, I would probably turn that setting button off altogether. 
in um, maybe for my regular users where I don't want the poking around, I can set it to restricted, which means that you hit the settings button and you can change the background or the ringtones, but you can't get access to that network information. Uh, and the default setting, of course, is leaving it wide open. That is a really excellent question. I, that's more time that I can do right now, but I will answer that and show you the different uh, ways that you can do that on a, um, a global uh, basis, on a group basis. And then, yes, there is actually, you can use import export to change that setting on a set of phones if you want to as well, if you need to be a little more granular about that. Excellent question. Um, I will uh, answer that in the Q&A after, if that's okay. Thank you, Mark. You bet. Okay, my job is now done, um, and I can check it. And I'm just doing an export of data, so I shouldn't have any failed records. I am going to now download that file here. Download. And I'm putting it on my desktop. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. All right, so I've got my lobby thing. Now, what I want to do is open this in Excel. And there's two different ways to do that. Um, I know this is a CSV file, so one way I could do this is by opening Excel itself. Let me grab Excel. And then I can say that I would like to open a um, file. And I'm going to look at Browse Desktop. And I want all files. And here's my lobby export. Now, when I do that, it's saying, hey, this does not look like a normal Excel file. What would you like to do with it? Well, I happen to know that CSV, v, comma, separated values, is a delimited, meaning it's in columns. It's marked off as columns. And so I would say select delimited. And what am I um, uh, delimited with? When I click Next, it's going to ask me. It is delimited with a comma. So I can see already that it's begun to do um, general date format. And finish. Uh, it's already uh, showing me the column format. OK, now, what I said is I wanted to have a set of phones where the lobby partition is the partition. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort my data so that I only see the lobby phones. I can do this by going up to Sort and Filter, and I'm going to filter. I'm going to filter on this field here, and I'm just going to select Lobby. Great. I only see the lobby phones. Now, what's the piece of information I actually want? What I actually want are these. I'm not going to worry about those two. That's an artifact of me not being smart about things. Um, I just want, really just want this piece of information. I want just the device names. What the custom file is going to do, remember, is replace our query. I didn't have a direct query that got me phones that have uh, directory numbers in this partition. What I need is a list of MAC addresses. I need a list of device names that I'm going to edit. And so here that is. I'm going to copy that data out. I am going to put it into Notepad++. And there's my query. File, save as. And this can just be a text file. And I'm going to call this lobby only import. Save. OK, what we need to do next now is import that data or upload that data. I am going to be uploading. Oh, I was just in that screen, wasn't I? I'm going to add new. I'm going to browse for this file that I just created, lobby only import. And what am I editing? Am I editing phones? Am I editing users? Am I editing uh, extension mobility profiles? Am I editing phones? Select transaction type. I'm going to be updating phones via a custom file. Now, while I'm on this menu, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I wish Cisco had changed, but they're not. Um, specifically, yeah, I guess I can't. See this thing right here this, where it says Update Phones CSV File? 
doesn't that look juicy? Do you mean I could just update phone by creating a CSV file and importing? Yeah, it looks good, but you can't use it. You can upload using this menu item right here, but there is no place in the bulk administration tool at all that allows you to go back and reference that file that you uploaded. Um, Cisco has been asked um, in the past to remove this from the menuing and it just is not on their high list of priorities. So if you see things and you're like, hey, that's not working, go ahead and just Google and people, folks like me will tell you, oh yeah, that doesn't work. Anyway, we are updating phones based on a custom file. Save. I am now going to phones, update phones, and instead of doing a query, I am now going to do a custom file. The fact that I uploaded the CSV file or the text file to the target phones in the transaction type update phones custom file means that when I click here, that custom file that I selected is right there. shows me my list of devices and sure enough those are the ones that I would like to change. Next and now I'm doing a standard bulk edit. I know that a extension mobility checkbox needs an apply config when I'm done so I can add apply config here after the bulk edit job is done it will apply config on all these phones and I'm going to scroll down to the extension mobility checkbox area and I want to change this field. What do I want to change it to? I want to change it to the status of unchecked. Run immediately and submit. It's a little bit of work to generate the data for a bulk edit job like this, but especially in a large environment, being able to do an export and a sort and a search and poof, you're done, can be very, very helpful. All righty. Um, any questions about that, uh, please post them in chat and let's go on to our next topic. Hi, Maren. Yes, sir. As you move on to that next topic, yeah. uh, we, had, uh, we had a question uh, from Kenneth that said, if the job scheduler shows some failures in the result log, mm -hmm. does the whole job get reverted or do the successful ones uh, still get processed? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> it depends on what kind of change you're making. Generally speaking, if it says that some records failed and some records succeeded, the records that succeeded did get changed and the records that failed did not. There are a few exceptions I've run to over the years. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but I've run into an, a couple of examples where if any part of the job bombs, the whole thing bombs. Generally, though, as you assumed, uh, you know, it either fails or succeeds and it does uh, complete for that particular object. I, I, does that make sense, Vic? Am I answering the question you, that you got asked? Certainly, and I guess the question would be, do you get an indication if it uh, moved forward on those or if it, uh, if it failed completely? Well, one of the nice things is that in the log file, it will tell you which records failed. If records failed, it will tell you which records failed. So you'll know which ones got updated and which ones didn't. So you can use that to uh, you know, try the job again with the correct set of, of users that you need to check or you need to change again. Is that, again, is that answering the question they're asking? Yes, thank okay. you. You bet. Okay, so there is bulk edit in general. There's bulk edit using a custom file in place of a query, but what about this, uh, this one? So I have a set of objects and I want to change a field, but that field is something like a text field. Um, or I want different settings for different users. An example might be editing the description field on a bunch of phones. Another example, and what we're going to use in our example, is that home cluster checkbox. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to export our users. We're going to export the current status of the home cluster checkbox. We are going to edit that, and then we are going to import. By definition, who has that checked and who has that not checked is going to be different for every user. And there's no simple way to do a query for that. And there's no, it's not like I can um, just check a box in the bulk edit um, field because that's going to check them all or uncheck them all. And that's not what I want. I want variable settings for variable people. So custom file format allows me not just to uh, update a certain set of objects, 
but it also allows me to update them in a certain way, any customizable field. So let's take a look. How this one's going to work is um, I am going to first, again, generate a report. I need to get the data that exists at the moment. So bulk administration tool, users, generate user report. So here are all my users. Next. Like with the um, phone and line, what this is going to allow me to do is select the fields that I would like to see. And specifically what I want is user ID. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select first name and last name just to make sure that I have consistent information, I know who I'm talking about. And then here's the home cluster checkbox. Call this HC export. And I'm going to run this immediately. Now, this one, again, this is another one of those searches that takes a little bit of time. So, Vic, back to you. Are there any other questions that um, seem appropriate for where we are right now? Because this is going to take a minute. Well, while that goes on, Lauren, let's see. Oh, I take that back. Yeah. I lied. I oh. lied. <laughs> I'll interrupt I, you later. Gosh darn it. So when I did this in the, uh, oh, maybe it's the import that takes, well, that's right. It's the import that takes a minute. So hold on to that thought, whatever that was, Vic, we'll get back to you in, literally in about two minutes here. Okay. So I have my field, I uh, have my uh, file. Let's download it. And here's my HC export. Download. Make sure it's on my desktop. And like before, I'm going to go ahead and that. Yeah. I'm going to open this in um, Excel. The other way I can open this in Excel is by renaming it. Now, I know that it's a CSV file. So rather than going through the you know, opening Excel and then going through the, the wizard, I can also just rename this CSV and poof, it's an Excel file, and I can just double click. Now, there is extra data in here. This is a report, and it's telling me a little bit about the report. I want to get rid of everything except for the header field, so I'm going to delete those lines. I'm also going to get rid of the blank line between the header fields and the data. A bulk administration tool job will stop as soon as it encounters a blank line. That is considered end of file. So I want to make sure I get rid of this one too. Oh, shoot. Well, darn it. Um, I had set up a bunch of CSV devices, uh, CSF devices. Um, I was going to add device association. That's what I get for not looking at my list. It stands to reason that folks who have a uh, C Let me just rerun this while I'm talking. It stands to reason that folks who have a CSF device are going to need the home cluster checkbox checked. And folks who do not have a CSF device probably don't need the home cluster checkbox checked. So um, in addition to the user ID and first name, last name, and home cluster checkbox, the other thing that I probably would want to export is device association. In order for a Jabber client to uh, log in, a user to, to get successfully log in, I have to have that. So um, I am going to, again, I'm going to just do this a little more simply. Do user ID. I do home cluster checklist. I'm going to skip first and last name. That was just sort of for thoroughness. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then controlled devices. This will show me who has a CSF device and who does not. Sorry about that. Oops. And call this um, HC checkbox export. Sorry about that. All right. And so this job is done quickly. Just going to go ahead and change its name while I'm at it. That makes my life easier. And here we go. Now, 
again, <laughs> uh, delete the lines that are extraneous, delete any blank lines. And if I look at control devices, you'll notice I see some CSF devices in here. If I now sort my data on that field, I can see that these folks have a CSF device and these folks don't. So these should all have the home cluster checks box being true. And these should all be false. All right, now, getting rid of these two columns because I don't want to use them as part of my import. Here we go. I have my user IDs and the status of the home cluster checkbox. And I want to save as. All right. Name this text file now. And back upload it. Bulk administration tool, upload download files. Add new. And I'm going for my HC checkbox export. I am editing user accounts and I'm updating users based on a custom file. All right, my file is updated. When I do this particular step uh, or this particular type of import, um, another piece that is part of this is a template. Uh, so I do have to have a user template to go along with this. And there is a huge caveat to this particular thing that we're doing here. Depending on the type of field in this template, and this template is required, depending on the type of field in this template, this, what I have here in the template, will override what's in the users, um, and some won't. And by that, I mean this. Manager user ID, department, and all that, right? Um, that's done by LDAP integration. That's not going to change. Checkboxes like control of device from CTI or uh, enable mobility or enable the mobile voice access, these sorts of checkboxes um, you know, whatever is in the template will override what is in my database unless I also export those fields. So if you're going to be doing this particular type of update, just be a little cautious of that. You're going to want to have a couple of test devices or a couple of test users to make sure that everything is the way you want it to be. Interestingly enough, things like um, access control group, you'll see it says none here, doesn't affect current users. So it really is some fields and not others. I'm going to go ahead and click Save here. So I have my template and I have my data. Gee, that sounds like a bat job to me. I am now going to update users based on a custom file. If you do some hunting around in um, the internet about this particular feature, Value for fields to be ignored. What is this field for? What this is saying is if there is a field, or if there's a, a field in my update, uh, uploaded spreadsheet that has a particular symbol in it like pound, then leave that field alone. Leave it whatever the original file is. So this is how you can um, export the data uh, uh, change the data that you want and then do an import but leave the original data alone that things you don't want to change don't get changed this is in place of like that that checkbox in the bulk edit feature I'm gonna go ahead and run immediately and I did one thing different than I did when I did this in my test so let's see if I'm actually gonna work this it'll show me pretty immediately whether I'm gonna have a good job or a bad job Oh, good. Okay. The fact that six ran means that the rest are going to run too. It's, this, is, this is very much an all or nothing sort of thing. Now, this one, Vic, takes a little while to finish. So, uh, any questions in the meantime? Uh, yeah. So, Marin, one of the questions would be, um, 
you know, when you, when you went through the process of uh, creating that file, mm-hmm. uh, you, you made it, you made a text file, you converted it to CSV so you could edit sure. it, and sure. then you processed it back as a text file. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would assume that the text file is the best uh, format to use for actually then the execution of the batch. Jobs so it's just, actually required. Um, if you yeah. are going to be uploading data into the bulk administration tool up into Call Manager, it must be for, for, formatted as a TXT file. And of course, that you can open in Notepad or Notepad++. Um, but it's easier oftentimes to work with these CSV files as um, Excel files, as CSV files in Excel, just because then I can delete entire columns rather than trying to mess with um, you know, raw text in a text file. So that's just that, that's the reason for converting back and forth. That's just for your ease of use. Does that answer the question that got asked? It sure is. Okay. And then the other question, just while we're here waiting for that screen mm-hmm. to refresh, is if you hit the stop process button, mm-hmm. will the user phones that were already processed return to how they were before? Nope. That they're done, right? Right. <laughs> so any changes you made, uh, are made. Correct. Um, it, you know, if you are doing some kind of vast import of 10,000 things and like, you know, 300 in, you go, holy cow, what did I just do? Stop processing could be useful at that point. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're, you know, stop processing will stop it, but it does not revert it. No. Bad so we'll is. Yeah, bad is can be a scary tool. You can seriously hose up your system if you're not careful. Always, 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 whatever kind of batch job you're going to attempt, either attempt it in a lab environment first, or at a minimum, create some dummy objects that you can practice on until you get the job right. And then, and then even at that, um, you know, when you're working on your production stuff, work on it in small batches until you're 1,000% sure that what you have is going to work in completely. Okay, great. Thank right? you. Okay. So uh, just to prove the point, let's go into uh, user management here. And some of my users that have uh, CSV devices, let's go and just check their end user accounts to see if they've got a um, checkbox. Let's see, I'm gonna look for Andre Green. I know he has a CSF device. There's a CSF device. There's my home cluster checkbox. And for Mr. Browning here, no CSV device, no home cluster checkbox. So as uh, per the, um, the, the, the file to be uploaded, which is awesome. Since I'm here, the other thing that is important for Jabber clients and presence is the line association. You know, it's one thing for a phone to be owned by a user so that that phone, when it's active, the presence changes, but the line appearance association is even more important. So what if I don't have line appearance uh, uh, associations done properly? And I don't have it done because I don't have uh, devices associated or whatever. You know, step one is to get the control devices set properly. Once you have the control devices set properly to Now update the line appearance information is so stupidly easy. I was amazed when I found this one out. So let's do this one. Bulk administration tool, users, they even have a menu for it. I am going to export line appearance association information. Again, which users, fine, all my users. And then what data do I want? Well, I'm gonna use line appearance format. I didn't have to create that, that's already in there. And what I'm gonna do for me is, hey, can you uh, export line appearances for all the devices that are associated? And what that's saying there is for all devices that are control devices in the end user account interface. uh, What call manager will do is go and retrieve all of the directory numbers, all the line appearances that are associated with that device or those devices and give you a list. And gee, that's what I would want for my associations for line appearances, wouldn't I? Oh, Uh, line appearance export. And I'm gonna submit. Let's run this job. And that's completed. That was a pretty easy thing to do, great. 
Let me download. And, oh, there we are, line appearance. Here's the nice part. If you want to have all of your line appearances for all the associated devices be the associated line appearances, done. All I need to do at this point is upload this file and all the associations are done. Uh, this does give you the opportunity to edit if there are certain directory numbers that I do not want to have or line appearances that I don't want to have associated with a particular user, but um, providing all associated devices, all associated lines uh, are associated with all my users, I'm done. I'm just going to upload the file and run the job. Um, let's see, so back in call manager, line appearance, update. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got to upload the file first. I always forget that step. Add new. Browse for the job I just exported. What am I doing? I'm editing users. And what am I doing? Specifically, I am, I'm sorry, user line appearance. And what am I doing? I'm updating user line appearance. Even a special menu item for it. This is how easy this makes it. And the administration tool, users, line appearance, update. Go get the file I just updated. Update line appearance, I'm sorry. I don't want to disassociate. Uh, I literally just upload it and done. That was easy. Processing. And as I recall, I just looked at Mr. Browning, and he did not have any line appearance associations. Let's see if he does now. Oof, ta-da. I like that one, that one's pretty cool. Okay, um, so the next thing we're gonna be looking at Oh, I forgot about the second polling question. I'm sorry, Hilda. I apologize. Um, let's go ahead and do another polling question. And Vic, if you have another question ready, um, have you used any of the tools that we've looked at so far? Um, have you used Notepad++? Have you used 7-Zip, which we're going to be talking about here in just a minute? Um, uh, Excel CSV files, have you worked with CSVs in Excel? And I also want to ask about Translator X, only because I'm sort of interested in seeing how many folks um, are um, uh, using Translator X like to work with trace files and whatnot. So uh, while we're waiting on the polling question, Vic, any questions so far? There's one that I just assigned you, Marin, and, and you might see the details on the, on the Q&A assigned to yourself. Oh. Okay, let me go take a quick look then. Yeah, there are um, two of them only. Let me do this. Let's see. Actually, I need to add the phone Mac under controlled devices. Are you talking about uh, associating? Uh, the reports she's downloading and the files she's uploading, do they stay in the hard drive or wherever? Yes, they do. Uh, mostly these text files are, you know, uh, tens or dozens of bytes or just a few kilobytes. I mean, just as raw text files are not that big a deal. Even with 10,000 users, maybe we're talking about a meg. Um, but it's very easy to go in and delete jobs and delete files in particular, especially if you do a lot of bat jobs. Uh, to delete bat files, um, you go into upload, download files here. and you just check the boxes for the ones you want to get rid of and delete, and they're gone, gone. I, I would encourage you to download things before you delete them, but there you go. And uh, I'm not sure about the add the phone Mac under control devices. Is it possible to associate control devices with user accounts in the bulk administration tool? Yes, that's actually how I ended up doing it. Um, that takes a little more work. You would have to export uh, phones, so you have MAC addresses, and also export the owner so you know which user IDs go with which phones, and then you manipulate that data a little bit, and then you can do an import um, using the bulk administration tool through users. Um, I can walk through the process in the Q&A after, after the fact, if that's okay. And I think that's all about there are. Uh, there's one question about third-party phones, Lauren. Does that work with third-party phones? 
Or is um, it the... Hilda, I can't seem to get rid of this Q&A panel. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Vic. What was that? Uh, just a question about third-party phones, uh -huh. polycom phones, mm -hmm. and that. Will mm -hmm. that work with third-party phones? It depends on the kind of thing you're trying to change. Um, obviously, a you know, I don't know, a, a third-party SIP soft phone, mm -hmm. as an example, doesn't have an extension mobility checkbox. Um, if you're doing a query and you have a set of devices that don't support a particular field, like the extension mobility checkbox is a good example. Like if I did an, uh, a query and it included third-party SIP soft phones in addition to Cisco phones, the field for extension mobility just won't show up. Um, so I can't select it. Um, so, but, but the bulk administration tool will work for any field that's applicable for third-party phones, yes. So the third-party phones, oh, perfect. So if the third-party phone supports Cisco functionality, it should work. Yes. Well, if the, if the phone exists in the call manager database, you can use BAT on it. You may not be able to change the field you want to, but like digest user shows up in there, description certainly, directory number. I mean, I, I can't think of a, a Polycom third-party phone field that would appear in the call manager database that wouldn't be in BAT. If it's in the call manager database, it's BATable for the most part. I hope that answers the questionable question. That's what we call it. <laughs> so cool. Looks like a lot of, lot of folks have used uh, worked with these. I'm glad to see so many people working with TranslatorX. Now, next, import, export. So import, export allows you to take any piece of data in the call manager database and export it out of your cluster. And when I say export it out, I don't mean it's going to erase it suddenly, but it means it allows you to extract any piece of information that you want out of there. Everything from service parameters to uh, user accounts to access lists to translation patterns, anything you can think of. That data can then be uploaded into another cluster. And that, this is one of the ways, um, if you don't have prime uh, provisioning deployment, um, I'm sorry, prime uh, collaboration deployment. This is one of the ways that you can migrate phones from one cluster to another. Export it from one cluster, make sure that the relevant fields exist, like device pools and whatnot in the new cluster, and then you can just do an import um, and, and you know, move them over. And there is even a uh, bulk administration tool job for deleting the phones out of the original cluster once the phones are actually migrated, which is kind of cool. Um, you can export any kind of data. You can import any kind of data. Um, as an instructor, when I am presetting a class, um, I start with a blank call manager, and I've got um, import files that allow me to preset you know, phones and users and translation patterns and all those things I just man mentioned. So two ways you might need to do this. Number one, if you need to make a bulk change on a field that does not appear in the regular BAT menus, and there's a few, not many, but there are a few. Or if you need to make changes on more than a thousand objects at the same time, because you, you know, the, the regular BAT menus um, will only allow you to search up to a thousand, even with your custom files. So this allows you, allows you to make much, much larger changes if you need to. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to export all of the phones. We are going to examine the, uh, the TAR file. I'm going to show you what the header file looks like. We're going to open up the file, change some descriptions, and then re-import. While we're at it, I'm also going to show you some um, formatting tricks for Excel to work with E164 numbers. So here we go. In Bulk Administration tool, Bulk Administration, Import, Export, Export. And if you look at these checkboxes, you can see literally I can export any kind of data from the bulk administration tool. And anything you export makes zero changes, has zero impact to the call manager database. So feel free to export at will. There's, there's no reason you can't. So what I'm going to do is go down to device data, and I'm going to check the box for phones. I want to export all of my phones. I'm going to call it phones only. And I'm going to run immediately. And I'm also going to talk for a moment about this check dependency checkbox. 
Now I mentioned a moment ago, if I'm going to be moving phones, let's say from cluster A over to cluster B, and I need to make sure that the things like device pool and whatnot exist in cluster B, if I check dependency, what that will do is cause call manager to go in and for the thing I initially checked, which was phone, it's going to go and check all of the other things that also would have to go along, that also have to match in that new cluster. And so this allows me to export all of it, which is awesome. Now I'm not going to do that. Let me uncheck them all here. Uh, clear all. I'm just going to undo my, do the phones. But if you're concerned about making sure you have all the proper fields, that's one way to do that. All right, I've got a name, I've got a checkbox, I've got to run immediately, and submit. Now, while this job is running, um, I'm going to be using a tool called 7-Zip to open up this tar file, and I want to say two things about that. Number one, if you do backups of your call manager, the backup of the call manager database itself is just a tar file. It's just a different version of zip. Um, it's a different uh, compression technique, different compression format. Um, regular WinZip doesn't work with that very well, but 7-Zip, uh, and you can get that at 7-Zip.org. Again, there's going to be a link at the end of the presentation where you can get this utility. Um, it also does regular zip, but I use it um, widely for uh, working with the tar files. So, you know, if maybe you inadvertently deleted something out of your database, and you're like, holy cow, how can I get it back? If you have a backup, you don't have to do a full restore of your entire cluster. You can go get that one, you know, open up the tar file that is your backup, go get the one CSV file, and re-import, and things go back to the way they were. All right. <laughs> I hear home thing. Were there questions, Vic? While I'm waiting on this? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to answer the questions that my students ask as I'm I'm going along. <laughs> I think it's a it's a good thing. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I, we are nearing the end of our time together, so I would like to show you this one last thing. It, when I come back, I will finish the, the import-export thing. But in the meantime, I would like to show you that technique for changing one phone to a new phone model. There are plenty of utilities out there that allow you to uh, do bulk migrations of phones to new phone models. You're doing a refresh, you know, uh, deploying new phone models for a particular building or something like that, but what about a single phone? You know, users spilled their double mocha latte all over the phone and it doesn't work anymore and I don't have any more of the same phone model. Or somebody's being promoted and so I need to change their phone because they're getting an upgraded phone. So how do I do a single phone? Here you go. Step one, you're going to go into the bulk administration tool and create a phone template for the new type of phone. So let's say my new phone type is going to be, oh, come on, there we go. <laughs> let's say my new phone type is going to be, oh, um, uh, 89.45, just let's say. Next. When you do the migration using the technique I'm about to show you, what's going to happen is that um, the fields that currently exist on the phone in their entirety will remain except for the couple of things that are phone model specific. So I'm going to call this uh, 8945 migrate. And I do have to select a device pool because that is uh, one of the default uh, or one of the required fields. Whatever is currently existing in the phone, I'm going to be uh, changing models for, it will remain, and I will prove that to you. Phone button template. Now that is a model specific field, so this will change. 88, what did I say, 89.45? Is that the one I picked? Yes. Um, similarly, this is a SIP phone, so your SIP uh, security profile and the SIP profile. These are required fields when you're building a phone, so they are required fields in your template. But other than that, this is the only thing you need to change. 
so the only fields that will change, are, again, are the model-specific ones, the phone button template and the device security profile. Um, depending on your environment, you may have to create a, a particular uh, phone button template for the user you're going to migrate, but then you can just delete that again. Wow, that save took a while. There we go. Okay, so I am going to go to one of my random phones. I suppose an 88, 8945 is an older phone. It's not really an upgrade, is it? Um, but uh, let's just grab this phone here, Jeff Black. And, um, and, and just to prove it, remember I mentioned about device pool won't change. Notice his device pool is currently Houston. What I had in the template was default. Related links, migrate phone. Go. What phone button template or what phone template am I going to use? What's the new MAC address? Um, a, 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 B, 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 C, 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 C. And the new description is going to be uh, Jeff Black new phone. Save. And that's it. Every field, all the line fields will remain. They'll just get migrated over to the new phone. All of the fields like um, uh, device pool, notice, stay the same they were in the original phone. And even better, if I go back to my find list, remember that, um, let me get rid of these fields here. Remember that Jeff Black um, had uh, an 8865 phone? That phone's gone. Here is my Jeff Black new phone, but you'll notice that the Jeff Black uh, 8865 phone is completely gone. It has gotten rid of the old one in place of the new one. So if you need to change one phone to a new phone model, this is the easiest way to do it. Love this. All right, from there now, our export job should be complete. Updating, updating, updating. Writing. And I can see I got 50 phones, so I am going to download that file. Did it not save it on the desktop? That's what I get for not doing a save as. Let me download it again. Download selected. Desktop. Hmm. All right, there we are. So this is. Um, the 7-zip logo, um, it's a tar file. I'm gonna double click. And here are the two uh, files that are inside the zip file, the phone CSV, and again, notice it's a CSV, I can just open that up in Excel, and then the header. The header, when you re-import, is very, very important. Um, let me do this first, let me extract to a folder. Let me show you the header file first, just because that's easy. When I do the import, you're going to notice that there are a certain set of checkboxes that are available for the import. How does Call Manager know what are the contents of the tar, the tar file? This is how it knows. So if you ever need to combine more than one tar file, you may need to go in and edit the header to make sure that all of the checkboxes are going to be available based on what's in the tar file. The rest of this stuff up here is just information from you. It doesn't matter. You can import this in, you know, using this header file even into a different version of Call Manager. It's irrelevant. Okay, I am going to open the CSV file here. And you can see now that I have every single field that is possible for a phone. And all the header rows. I'm trying to get over to directory number. Now, for those of you who have worked with Excel, you know that sometimes these fields, especially if I don't have the, um, the slash in front of it here, can end up, uh, it, like it gets rid of the plus. So how do I work with this? How do I get this system to understand that the plus is not a uh, character to be, you know, formulaed, but rather just to make it a regular old formula? Well, that's one of the reasons that Cisco has that slash in front, of the, in front of the plus, because that's the way databases work. The slash means that the next character is not a programmable character. 
But the other thing you can do if you're ever working with one of these fields, select a field, and you're going to format the cell, and you're going to put in a custom way for the system to modify. Oops, here we go. And the way you type it is plus, pound, space, question mark, slash, question mark. What you're saying is that these characters are not programmable characters. So the plus is no longer a programmable character. The pound is no longer a programmable character. This is especially important if you have like translation patterns or route patterns that end in a pound. And then when I click OK, now it's going to be a normal field. It will be able to interpret things like the plus. Um, so for instance, if I get rid of the slash now, um, the plus remains. All right. So what I wanted to do with this now, <clears throat> excuse me, is to edit my description field. Um, I am going to get rid of the, um, uh, the um, uh, what's the what word I'm looking for? The quick user phone ad templates, um, the universal device templates. I need to get rid of those. But other than that, here we go. This is all the stuff that I want to have. And let's suppose I would like to just audit or edit the CSF device um, uh, fields or the, those, the descriptions on just those devices. I'm going to delete the rest of the rows because I don't care. I don't want to make changes on that. And then let's suppose I would like to change that. And I'm going to um, replace that with CSF. Great. Why? Because, gee, I don't need all that mess. All right, I am now going to save the file. I'm almost done, Hilda. And I now have this file in the new format. If I reopen it, just as an example, there we go. Um, so what I need to do now is re-zip the file. And I have, uh, what I'm going to do is um, select 7-zip. I'm going to add it to a new archive. And I'm going to add it to uh, CSV description change. It's going to be a tar file. Notice I included that header file. Got to have that as part of the import file. So now I upload. Oh, I'm in the menu again, darn it. Add new. And um, I need to get that folder. Again, what am I working with? I'm working with phones. And I am going to be inserting phones all details. Now, that may seem counterintuitive. I'm not really inserting phones. I'm just editing phones, right? The way that works, this is going to be an insert. If I were to reduce that uh, entire spreadsheet and have only the, um, like the MAC address, the device name, and the description field and get rid of all of the other columns, then I could do an insert phone specific details, but then you need a template. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all details. What? Did I pick the wrong thing? Tar? Oh, I'm sorry. Import, export. My bad. Import. I'm importing. I'm overwriting with an import. I could also have changed the CSV to a uh, TXT file and done that the other way. I'm just going to import. Bulk administration tool, import. Bottom line with that last conversation, and forgive me for blathering a little bit, is there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, there's lots of ways to do different things here. So I'm importing phones. I'm overriding the existing configuration. It's only going to work with those eight devices, and it's only going to change the description field because I didn't change anything else. I'm going to run immediately, submit, and done. I did that for eight devices, but it could have been 1,008.
Hey, Marin, uh, I think you I think you alluded to it, but uh, in that uh, phone CSV file, mm -hmm. you can delete columns that you don't want to look at. Is that correct? You can. If you do that, then um, uh, you would need to do a um, insert phones, and you're going to be doing it with specific details. And at that point, you need to have a phone button template. And then you again, then you have to do it on a per phone model basis. Whereas if you do it straight export, straight import, or you could also uh, upload just the CSV file and do an insert phone all details. That would be another way to do it. Um, that effectively does the same thing as the import that I just did. Uh, but that allows you to do more than one phone model at a time. If I do it with just specific details, if I delete columns and I only want to do certain details, then I can only do it on a per phone model basis. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Excellent question. All right, I'm completed. Let's go take a look at our CSV files. I mean, our uh, phones. Oh, and my mouth is getting tired after only an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and here we go. All of my CSV uh, phones have now been changed, but the rest of it looks all perfectly normal. Okay. Um, yes, and the device pool is default because of the way I created those. That's not abnormal. And that brings us to the end of what I have with regards to demonstration. Um, one last polling question. Uh, what other collaboration topics would you be interested in learning about? Um, uh, Cisco has <laughs> encouraged me to do more of these, which I'm totally fine with doing, but I want to find out what you guys want to know. Um, so if you would go ahead and answer the polling question. While you're doing that, um, we're going to do a little bit more of Q&A at the end of the presentation here. And other than that, as Hilda mentioned earlier, if you have additional questions or would like to see other processes, please uh, post them in Q&A and I will, in the Ask the uh, Expert event after, um, I will include the answers to that in as many demos and screenshots as I can um, to, to help with this. Uh, it has been a pleasure uh, working with you this week, uh, or today. <laughs> and um, I hope you come to more of these uh, these events. This is this is cool, and I'm glad to be able to uh, help you learn new things. And with that, I will turn it over, back over to Hilda. Hey, Mary, thank you so much for, for for doing this event. And actually, you are you are not only for today. You are and not this week. You are most of the time helping people in the community. For all of you who have further questions, Mary, and even though she's not on an event like this or an Ask Me Anything session, she she looks to help people in the Cisco community. Mm -hmm. So you are most of the time there, Mary. I do try to be because I there's <laughs> you know, it's when well, I, my first version of Call Manager was 3.05, so we're talking about better part of 20 years ago. And when I started, there were two count them two interfaces, not six, and there was like four menus wide, and they were you know not very long. Walking into Call Manager these days is a buzzsaw. If you include all, you know, all the presence stuff and all of the, oh my gosh, jabber and holy cow. New people walking in today have it really rough because there is a lot to know just to be functional. So anytime I can answer questions, especially for new folks, I am way happy to do that. Oh, thank you so much for that, Marion. And then, indeed, many things have changed. Okay, there are a couple of questions that I'm going to uh, provide to you and read aloud. Mm -hmm. So one of them is, uh, if you know the difference uh, or if there's something new for this new version 12.5 comparing with the old version of the UCM. I haven't seen, are you talking in general with 12.5? Um, I would say yeah, re in release notes. With, uh, with um, a lot of the new cool features, uh, and I, I, you'd have to read the release notes. I don't remember off the top of my head because I've been so buried in bat the last few days. Um, there are some new things that are only really functional in 12.5. Um, I know that um, Jabber 12.5 with Call Manager 12.5 can do some fun things with Contact Center and Finesse and all that. And I know that um, some of the newest um, Expressway features, like having a phone, an 88, uh, I think it's 8845 and 8865, if so I'm not mistaken, sitting at your house can register through Expressway all the way to Call Manager without you having to have a, um, a VPN, um, either VPN box or a VPN on the phone. 
um, like a Jabber client, the 8845s, 8865s, will be able to register directly through Expressway using DNS resolution and all that good stuff. That is only available with the most recent versions of all of this. Um, the, but as but one example of some of the new cool things that are available in the newer versions. Uh, and that's, I, that's all I have off the top of my head. Um, and I wish I had more for you. If anybody else, I saw a couple of people I think already know. So if you can uh, maybe throw that into uh, chat or Q&A to help. Okay. Help. Yep. I think we will provide more details on the Ask Me Anything as well, okay. just in case. Sure. Uh, also, someone says that you did not mention how disable uh, the phone setting that you mentioned early on. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so since uh, we're waiting for the polling question to be done, there you go. System Enterprise Phone Configuration. This allows you to make a global setting for any of those hardware checkboxes that are down at the bottom of a phone. And the one that uh, the, the, uh, the, the person with the question was asking about specifically was the settings. Let me find it here. Here we are. Settings access. And it is enabled by default. On a um, cluster-wide basis, I can make it disabled or restricted. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, I want it enabled except for a certain group of phones. Is there a way I can do this on a group basis? Absolutely. Remember that when you're applying settings in Call Manager, um, enterprise-wide defaults first, group settings second, individual objects third. So for group, status, group basis, so I have everybody you know, is enabled, but I want to disable it on a certain set of phones, I can go to device, device settings, and oh, I think it's common device configuration. I always get these two mixed up. Oh, no. Everything okay, Hilda? Oh, oh, oh yeah, no, just uh, WebEx kicked me out from the session, but you just can keep going on. I will be there oh, in, a, okay. in a moment. Yep. So, uh, common phone profile. I made the wrong one here. And this allows you to, to have those same checkboxes, but now on a group basis. And you can make as many of these uh, common phone profiles as you want. So I could do it differently here, and then when I create a build a phone, They will get the enterprise-wide default unless the common phone profile is set. And I'll get this common phone profile settings. Um, but if even within that group, I would like to have an individual phone be different, you can do it here. In order to do a bulk administration tool change, for the settings. If you want to be granular about some phones, yes, some phones, no, some phones disabled, some phones restricted, you would need to do the export. Um, on that export file, um, this field exists. And then you would have to do an import with that, um, either with the you know, import uh, phones or the insert phones, all details, or the import phones specific details. But that's, uh, th so there's, uh, the global settings, the group settings, the individual settings, if you need to bulk admin it, that you just have to do the techniques I showed you, but starting with the export, which is one of the reasons I wanted to show you that. I hope that answers the question. Anything else? Vic, Hilda? Lauren, yes, there's, there is a, a question. I, thought, I, I think I've thought about this one myself. Um, <laughs> is it possible to unsubscribe services on the phones using, the, using that? Yes, there is. Um, that is also a custom phone format. Phone file format, create file format. And this is that custom file format where I'm going to have a certain set of information, right? I'm going to add a new file format, allowing me to have fields. And down here, um, it allows me to see the phone services. And as I do the edits, are you subscribed to this service? Yes, no. Um, I can change that to false and have it unsubscribed. So yes, it is possible to do that. Very good, okay. thank you. Okay. Actually, now I think about it, one more, I'm oh, sorry. Update phones query, I think you can do it this way too, if I'm not mistaken, now that I think about it. Very quickly, I, forgive me, I know it's getting, it's, we're, we're past fine. time, aren't we? Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. All right, and next. 
this is the way to do this. Yeah, um, assign IP phone services. Um, um, and you can use a template. Um, and if the template has no services, it won't have services. I think that is IP phone services. You know, that's a really good question. I'm not 100% sure. I would use the, uh, the, the other way. I'm not 100% sure how to do it. I know it's possible. I'm not sure how. So uh, let, me, you know, let me put that in the, uh, the Q&A for after or the, ex the expert, because that's a really good question. Sure. We will cover like, uh, like all the remaining questions, Marin, into the, in the yes, Ask Me Anything, yeah, due okay. to the time. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So well, thank you. Thank very you, much. everybody. I had a yeah. great time. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we thank you, uh, and thank you so much, Vic, for covering all the questions and being a survivor for these uh, WebEx uh, issues. Uh, for all of you who don't you don't know, but Vic has been kicked out from WebEx several times, but still, uh, besides from that fact, he has been here with us all the time. So. Thank you so much for that. And well, uh, the recording of this session will be available on just on the event page where you just register to this session, okay? Uh, and also we will be covering all the remaining questions on the Ask Me Anything session of this event. Also, like uh, so, they are all the questions, all the remaining questions will be on the Ask Me Anything following this event uh, till this Friday, all right? And thank you so much for joining us. So for all of you who would like to know more about the upcoming events or activities that we have in the community, we invite you to check out our social media channels. We're available on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and on the application for all those customers and partners. Uh, also, we have Forge training in different languages. We keep expanding. Uh, French is our latest community. So if you're looking for training like this in different languages, you just have a look into the Cisco community local. Also, if you're looking for Forger ID training, the Cisco Learning Network also provides different options and alternatives for you as well. And once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you will be receiving a survey once we close down this event. Please help us to fill, us up, fill it out. It helps us out to identify what kind of topics you would like to see in upcoming events and also how we're doing and how we can improve. And for all of you who fill out this survey, you will get a 35% discount um, with this code, CSC. Uh, here are some samples that you, of the things that you can like get this discount. However, you can pick up or choose any title that you rather prefer. Once again, thank you so much for joining today. We wish you have an amazing 2020, and we hope to see you next time. And Big uh, and Marion, thank you so much, and it has been a pleasure to collaborate with you. Thank you, Hilda. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. We wish you have a great day. Yeah, okay, you too. Bye-bye.